everyone. Uh, I hope you just enjoyed that uh, amazing race that we just had. And uh, I hope you're ready for the next one. So um, Jamie isn't here right now, so I'll be doing a little solo comms until she shows up. But for now, um, I think the runners are both getting ready. And uh, we'll be starting shortly. Huh. <sighs> All right, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna get ready sooner than later since the last match went a little late. So um, Jamie ever shows back to her computer, shows back up, then she can jump on. But um, Yeah, we, I have a quote from Rhino here that he doesn't care about average time. He's murdering Mylan in cold blood. So we might see some shenanigans out of him later in the race. I think both runners are getting ready to uh, warming up, getting ready now. We should be starting in a minute or two. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to this race. Their PBs are around five minutes apart, four minutes apart, which really means anything can happen, which is uh, good, pretty interesting. Yes, Rhino is going to be getting his KP practice, the most important practice, most important thing of the run. Obviously. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Looks like he's trying to do underplat, appease the fans. But, um, yeah, so... Yes, there we go. Under plat, we do love to see. Oh, okay. Now I'm all caught up. My delay was lagging a little bit, but uh, I think we're gonna get this race started. So. Um... So hopefully we'll be getting both players up at the mode select screen, getting ready to start. So hopefully we'll get some readies from them. So if you do not know, this is the 2021 Hollow Knight All Skills Tournament. And um, I'm waiting for R from Clearest right here and we will be getting ready to go. So once we get into the run, I'll explain a little more. 
what in its entirety is going on. All right. All right, so both runners should be on their way. Anytime now, I'm just going to wait for... Uh, wait for the uh, stream delay to catch up. But uh, as we wait, this is the Hollow Knight All Skills 2021 tournament. If you don't know what a skill is, it's pretty much all upgrades that you can get, save... Um, Dreamgate and uh, Dreamgate and the uh, Ascended Dream now, just because we don't feel like getting those. Other than that, um, yeah, so it's Ventral Spirit, all nail arts, stuff like that. So the first mechanic you're going to be seeing is what's called a menu drop. You open the menu up and it uncaps your menu speed. Very, it'll be used. Pretty pretty commonly along the run, so you're going to see it a lot. It's good to know what that is. Um, both runners have... Um, Rhino is definitely a little more experienced with the run. Has been running a lot of different categories for a long time. He's the favorite for this round, whereas Caliris hopefully will get a good running going. But their runs, as I said before, are pretty close, only five minutes apart, which is closer than many things we've seen so far in the first round. So uh, hopefully we'll be uh, seeing some good runs from both of them. And now um, both runners exiting King's Pass, the hardest part of the run, obviously. And they're going to be making their way to get the first upgrade of the game, Vengeful Sphere. We're going to see a little extra menu drop from both runners. Hopefully, they both walk past Elderbug. To uh, much, much of the speedrunners' delight and many casual players' dismay, walking past Elderbug. We uh, do have a need for the speed that only gets sated by Myla or some grub sometimes. So, um, yep, both runners are going to be making their way down. There, this is this drop coming up is a pretty orangey heavy drop, which uh, hopefully we will be seeing just a clean fall from both, which we do, which is good to see. Uh, they're pretty much both even at this point, which is uh, very good to say. They're pretty much, yeah, I don't see any one run uh, over the other, and there might be audio we say. Uh, desync? I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think Polaris may have forgotten a load normalizer, but uh, that that's a pretty commonality that we've seen from the run so far. So that's not the end of the world. But Polaris will be uh, getting a little bit ahead here, just due to faster load times. Um, in addition to that, the lack of text we've also seen. Um, and there seems to be a little audio delay. Maybe you can switch. Um, Rhino seems to be having a little audio delay. But uh, we might switch to clear his audio. Hopefully that'll improve the uh, audio desync. But uh, we will see. Uh, now we're going to be seeing both players going to the first boss of the game, uh, False Knight. And there's a actually dev intended shortcut that you can get through this boss, get out of the boss fight early that we're going to be using. We don't need the reward from the boss fight. We just need to get past him as fast as possible. So uh, we're going to be... Oh, Colirus' audio does seem to be out of sync as well. But... Uh, we can deal with that, it's no big deal. Just a little... Just a little uh, annoying technical issues. Hopefully we'll have these all out of the way by the first round. Um... But, uh, yeah. So 
So we're going to be seeing both players pick up the uh, first the first of the game, the first upgrade, the Vengeful Spirit, which acts as a fireball, which you could use damage. You could do damage to uh, enemies and also open up uh, ways to new areas, which we're going to be doing. Less distracting than the timers, TBH, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a little unfortunate that we didn't have the audios out of sync. As I said, hopefully all these uh, unfortunalities, all these little little issues are over by the first round. But uh, that's the way the first round goes, am I right? So um, we may be restarting the stream to uh, in order to fix the audio desync. But uh, it depends on how long the stream would be out and uh, how much we would miss. I also wouldn't want to uh, take away any PBs possible by the runners. But uh, if their audio is out of sync, I don't think they can submit it anyways. Um... So um, I think we're going to be going out for a small minute here. I hope you guys don't mind. We're going to be getting the audios back in sync. Stream might go down for just a second, but uh, uh, thank you for your patience because this is definitely one of the uh, harder things about this type of tournament. All right, so uh, I think we are back up. Please let me know in chat. Okay, yeah, perfect. So now, sorry, uh, we missed a little bit, but this trick we're going to be seeing is called a fireball skip, where we use the fireballs that we just got to uh, propel ourselves a little back over the edge. So, um, yeah, so this is a pretty common trick and a, I don't want to say easy, but a trick that is pretty quickly learned by runners. Um, I'm not sure because the audio the sync was out if Kaliris got it, but I definitely saw Rhino get the second one. Yeah, Rhino definitely looks a little ahead right now, which is good to see from him. Uh, he definitely, his early game, he said, was definitely his best part since he uh, has ran, um, he ran, uh, what's it called, any percent for a long time, and the any percent beginning is very similar to the all skills beginning uh, early game beginning whatever you want to call it so um we should be seeing a pretty consistent and good early game out of him he looks to be around 30 seconds ahead 28 seconds ahead which is uh pretty fortunate he gets the good rng here which we do like to see and uh that is good So now both of these players are going to be making their way to Hornet, which they'll be getting the Mothwing Cloak, the first movement upgrade that pretty much everyone in any run, save low percent, gets, which allows you to dash, get to new areas, and uh, dodge enemies pretty easily. But as uh, most important for us, move a little bit faster. So um, both players have uh, specific strategies for this fight. Um, it takes... 
four hits, I believe. Four hits to Snagger, for which um, the runners are going to be looking to chain their Snaggers together so they can put uh, it into predictable patterns in which they can uh, get off as much damage as possible. So Rhino with a pretty clean Hornet fight and clears as well. They around the neither of them really gained a lot of time on that fight, which is uh, fortunate. Um, so they're going to be doing a quit out here to return to the bench that they were just at. And uh, so yeah, so both runners are going to be going back to where they benched or didn't bench, but got their hard save at to um, go down and hopefully go to Claw now. Hopefully no one forgets and does the infamous Jamie skip where they forget Claw and go straight to uh, Ruzz Mother. I've definitely done it. Every runner's done it, done it a couple of times. But in a tournament setting, oh, Rhino doesn't, neither party forgets, which is pretty good, what you'd like to say. This is a, definitely a more movement heavy uh, split with a couple interesting uh, skips. This room coming up is very movement heavy and can be pretty difficult. We're gonna see how both of them do. Rhino definitely, you can see the practice that he's put into this room and the ILs he's done with this room in that fall. Pretty much optimal. And he seems to be a little more ahead now. Not a huge difference, definitely make upable in the long run. So uh, both of them are going to be going past Cloth, the best NPC in the game, arguably. And uh, they're going to be making their way to the Claw, which they're, there's a couple more tricks that they're going to have to do, one of them being E-Pogo, or Explosion Pogo, where they pogo off an explosion that is coming up using, uh, there's some Sporgs coming out here, I think that's what they're called. Then they're going to be pogoing off the explosion to uh, get up to this ledge up on the left, we see. You can see Calarius going for it now. Pretty clean. And Rhino. Ooh, a little, almost clipped the edge, but pretty confident in his ability to get it anyways. So now both of them are going to be doing something called Mantis Skip. Clear is taking a little safer route, but he definitely gets it. Ooh, Rhino forgetting or missing the lever, didn't forget. And struggling a little bit on Mantis Pogo, losing him a little bit of time. This will put the racers, those uh, tournament nerves, definitely getting to him a little bit. Uh, he's going to be taking his time a little bit more on this section. Oh, uh, very unfortunate missing Mantis Pogo. It's definitely an easy trick to miss. And the RNG of the, uh, I don't even know what they're called, Mantis. Uh, I think it's Mantis Younglings or Mantis Teenagers. Um, their movement is a little bit RNG, so that can definitely screw you over. So um, now both of them are going to be going all the way to... Um, Gruz mother and they're gonna be doing a large sequence break from a normal so th so far they've been taking a pretty normal route that a casual player would be taking but now with uh shade pogo they're both gonna be taking a pretty different route so, uh, this trick isn't too inconsistent and even if you're a casual player you can learn it on your own there's a pretty consistent setup for it mantis youth that's what it is there's so many different enemies in this game. Hard to remember all their names. But uh, both of them using Mantis, Mantis Claw now are going to be going up and beating uh, beating the Gruz Mother, which um, there's a consistent quick kill and clean up from both of them, which we're going to be seeing here. It's a pretty easy boss, just like the first one that we saw, we, just like VK that we saw, or False Knight, not VK. M messing up the bosses as per usual. Rhino does have an opportunity to make like a little bit of time here. That was not the greatest cleanup. And that was an interesting quick kill. Uh, Griff Mother just followed him into the corner. Now we're going to see Kalirius be picking up Shaman Stone. This uh, charm, which is like an upgrade that we can use, um, allows 
allows the user to, their spells are going to be more potent and larger and do more damage, which is very good that we'd like to see in this uh, in this run. Spells can do a lot of damage and they're, they're runners' primary uh, source of damage in this run. So Shaman Stone is definitely a good pickup. And the uh, death that we just saw, that was completely intentional. And that's going to be setting up for the Shade Skip, where we are going to go all the way from early game areas to a pretty mid to late game area of Right Side City. Rhino trying a little special strat to get some extra Geo. Nothing, nothing too crazy out of there. Yeah, unfortunately, we do have mismatched timers. That's just... One of the runners forgot low normalizer. Ooh, Rhino unfortunately gets a uh, fireball there, which is uh, a good recovery after the fact, though. It's very unlucky. It's a quarter chance to get a fireball there, but uh, pretty unlucky out of him. I'm just looking at Rhino's timer to see uh, where the runners are at. I think Rhino's still a little bit ahead, even after the Mantis Bogo mishap, just due to good movement. Yeah, he's around 20 seconds ahead, 20 to like 15 seconds ahead still. And now we're going to see both of the runners elect to not go to Dream Now in this run, as they would do in any percent. Instead, they're going to be going to City and getting an upgrade called Dash Slash, which a uh, uh, very popular um, Scandinavian uh, streamer likes to uh, say a lot, and that we're going to be seeing them perform something called Lever Skips. So um, what that basically is, is in this patch of the game, you can hit levers through walls and the dash slash ability allows the runners to hit them for more distance, which pretty much opens up ver various new levers for them to use. That we're going to be seeing them using that multiple times throughout the run, but they're going to be going, collecting a little bit of extra geo from Gorgeous Husk here, or we're going to see from Clearest. Uh, getting a little extra geo. This boss actually drops 420 geo. So um, make of that as you will of what he was doing in there. The very large and gorgeous enemy. And uh, he's going to be quitting out, going back to the bench he took. And he's going to be making his way to Kingdom's Edge to grab Dash Slash from one of the now men. I think it's Oro, right? Yeah, Oro is the one that's out in Kingdom's Edge. We're going to see Rhino clean up Gorgeous Husk pretty easily as well. Wait, it doesn't really, the damage here doesn't really matter overly because they're just prepping to clear, uh, quit out once again. And we're going to be seeing Clearest come into this area. This area is pretty challenging to ch casual runners and to speedrunners alike, especially if you don't have enough Geo like Clearest doesn't. He's going to need to collect a little bit of extra Geo from these, uh, Mini hoppers and Vino as well. That's just the so the uh, geo routing in this part of the run is very tight since it is pretty expensive. Ooh, now we're gonna be seeing a little bit of extra danger. He's done one HP. These primal aspids can be incredibly annoying, and they seem to have auto aim on wherever you are. And they do have a lot of health as well. So we're gonna see him. Taking his time, trying to get health. Ooh, very unfortunate death there. Doesn't lose too much time, but it is very, very tough to come back from a death in this course of the race. Rhino taking his time, getting his Geo as well as a clear as. And he's stopping in this route. This, that's why it's so important to try to have as much Geo as you can before this route because any stopping just allows those primal aspids to really lock on and get a good get some good aims at you Ooh, went with a very good uh great hopper hit there and he's gonna be with geo to spare after collecting the mini hoppers so it might be smart for players to grab that first row but uh he's gonna be getting his prioritizing getting his shade Taking a couple more damage on the way. He's two Geo short, which is really unfortunate. And he can't really afraid, afford to take any more damage. Ooh, that's really unfortunate again. Yeah, this is a very, very difficult part of the run, especially if you don't have enough Geo. 
Big F's in chat for Claris. So he still doesn't have enough Geo, so he'll have to probably grab one from the mini hoppers on his way. But uh, we are going to see Rhino. Um, we're going to see Rhino, Rhino be going all the way across to Desolate Dive. Another pretty difficult part of the run. The current patch version of this runs. This part in the current patch of the run is much harder. But uh, actually, no, they grab Shade Soul first. Sorry. I'm current patch brain, current patch runner over here. Um, they're going to be going grabbing Shade Soul first using their uh, Dash Slash ability to unlock that lever without having to get any keys or anything. Steal Geo from Myla. That is the correct, that is the correct decision. First is killing Myla, now we're stealing Geo too. So Clearus pretty cleanly gets his shade and makes his way all the way to the Nailmaster. Hopefully, if he can keep his wits about him and not get too, um, too uh, shaken by his de early deaths, he may be able to perform a little bit of a comeback, but yeah, he is a pretty good PB as well, so it's unlikely that we're going to see a tournament, tournament PB out of him. So Rhino, he's going to be doing this arena pretty easily, and we're going to be seeing the first lever skip out of him coming up soon. He's going to be going to the left here, and he's going to be skipping this entire boss fight in order to do the lever skip. Going on up this elevator, charge up his nail art, all stuff we've seen before. And as you see, he uh, nails through the door and gets the shade, upgraded Vengeful Spirit or Shade Saw. On current patch, these uh, these two rooms are actually on two completely separate rooms, so it would be impossible to do no matter what. But in this version, it's pretty easy. Uh, Clearest, we're going to be seeing a little bit of any percent muscle memory stopping right, right after, uh, well, I don't know what run that muscle memory that's from. Um, but definitely, definitely a little stop there, but we're going to be seeing Clearest go do what Rhino just did and Rhino making his way to Desolate Dive. Another movement uh, ability slash gate opener slash everything else. We're going to be seeing another dash slash out of him. And this is the boss that he skipped. We're going to be seeing another one. He should clean up pretty quickly. Uh, these guys are really not that tough once you get Vengeful Spirit. Uh, Shade Soul, sorry. But Chase Soul definitely shreds them, as it does with a lot of bosses in this game. Ooh, bad RNG, him teleporting there, but Rhino definitely knows how to clean him up and not take any damage. It's pretty impressive. I definitely would have ran into him. Um, we're going to be seeing another Dash Lash right here and skip a very, very difficult room on Current Patch. On Current Patch, this room is definitely one of the worst in the run, but... One, two, two, one runners get to uh, skip and go on their way. Um, please note that he is not taking those uh, soul jars. One, because his soul is full. And two, because if he shades souls that way during the fight, he's able to collect them. And uh, he's able to collect them and use them for... Yeah, you see he's getting the soul from the shade jars that he just... Uh, soul jars that he just shade sold. Clear is picking up Shade Soul right now, and Rhino makes quick work of the uh, Soul Master. Now this uh, this fight isn't quite done yet. In something that gave me a big scare in my uh, casual playthrough, he has a second phase. It's, uh, I'm interested to see what strat he's going to go through. Just just jumps, nothing too crazy. Pretty tournament safe. And he's going to go up and fireball him in the corner. Get it easy. Get it pretty easy. I cannot speak today. But we're going to be seeing Kaliris go through this area as well. Get that lever skip, no problem. And, uh, ooh, get a little cool, uh, cool wall cling storage in there. Uh, if you don't know what wall cling storage is, if you uh, dash through a gate as it's opening, then you... Uh, it's still, you still wall cling to it, and you go pretty fast and far out of it. We use it various times. Ooh, good dodge from him as well. Um, we're going to be seeing Rhino doing the third 
or fourth, um, uh, dash slash, dash slash, uh, lever hit through the door, lever skip, and uh, he's gonna be getting out of this area with little to no worry. These, uh, these lever skips definitely come in a lot of handy in this area. There's a lot of levers that you have to hit, and uh, it's pretty miserable without them as current patch runners now. Now from here, we're going to be seeing him go across to... Uh, he's going to be going back to King Station, where he was before. And he's going to be from there, he's going to be going to Crystal Peaks. Uh, a, a mid to early game area that he's going to be going and getting another movement ability called the Crystal Dash. Clear is also making good work of the of the Soul Master, using those uh, Shade Souls to hit as many double hits as he can. And um, we're going to be, uh, I'm also going to be interested in seeing what strategies Clearest goes for in the second, second half of the fight as well. It's always pretty interesting to see what they like to do. Ooh, Rana taking a big hit there. No worries, because I believe they take the bench here, even on current patch. Just has to be pretty careful. Yeah. Definitely taking the bench here. It's no big deal. Definitely could have been detrimental if he died there. That would have been a big death. It would have allowed for Clearest to pretty much be back on pace with him. If not a, only a little bit behind. So Rhino making his way quickly through uh, the City of Tears, collecting Geo on the way, beating up these enemies. And uh, Clearest is gonna be making his way out of Soul Sanctum using the lever skips that we've seen throughout the run. So, uh, yeah, so Rhino has, you always have to avoid these great host entries and let's see if we see impossible jump out of him. Oh, yes, we do. Beautiful. That jump used to be pretty difficult. Now there's a pretty consistent setup for it. And it's always, I love to see it. Ooh, clears with a unfortunate death there. It doesn't lose too much time, but it still sucks to die there. Yeah, it definitely is unfortunate. You, yeah, you can still follow the same route though. Maybe use some pogos. Ooh. Your shade, I think it's gonna be all the way down, which might be unfortunate. I actually am not familiar with where the shade will spawn. Is it up? No, I think it is down. And yeah, that is a very tough area. It's probably smart for him to just damage tank out of here and just deal with the, uh, Deal with the consequences, maybe Pogo. Ooh, this would be another very unfortunate death. Oh, that is unfortunate. Tournament nerves seem to be getting to clear us. Hopefully he can bring this back up for a decent rest of the run. Yeah, it is, this is a very, very tough area. There's tons of these little uh, mistakes and follies. I'm not joking, that's literally what they're called. Uh, can be very, very annoying. See, I do know some. I do know some enemy names, just not all of them. Um, yeah, damage tanking out of here is definitely a doable strat on both runs of this game. Hopefully, he gets up to this platform. Oh, that is unfortunate. Once you jump and hit that right wall, it's pretty much scot free. But uh, big triple oof out of Caliris. Not what you want to see. Let's let's turn our eyes back to Rhino Feeder, who's going to be making his way pretty cleanly through Crystal Peaks. We're gonna be seeing if he goes for Pogax coming up, which is a uh, pretty interesting trick. It's probably, yeah, looks like it. Ooh, bad RNG out of the thrower, but he still gets it. That's very impressive out of him. And he's gonna be going up this coming room for him is very cycles based. And uh, if he can get it through all the way with no damage, you can get God Cycle or God Pixel. Uh, it does not like, like it does not look like he gets the cycle, but pretty clean room nonetheless. Uh, Clear is finally making out of that room, which is a very, very tough obstacle at this point in the game. Actually, I should not try to curse him too soon, but um, he's at two health, going to be collecting a little extra soul. Hopefully he remembers to get both guys. Yeah, this is definitely a little stressful from Clearest's point of view, but uh, hopefully he recovers a little bit. 
I hope he remembers he does have to grab a little extra soul here. Oh, that's good that those guys respond so he can't get soft locked. Um, we're going to be seeing Rhino charge up a nail art here to hopefully go to. Is it Homo Ball? Homo Dash Lash? Uh, who knows? He's going to be. What? He's going to be going for Damageless Cycle, which is a very, very tight trick to get through this entire area Damageless. Still at five health. Very impressive. And of course, an underplat out of him. He loved. We love to see the underplats. So Clearus making his way out of the room, out of Soul Sanctum, and hopefully he does not want to see this area ever again. Oh. <laughs> Taking some elevator spikes. Not, uh, not, not the preferred outcome, but uh, with two health, he should be pretty fine. Oh, no. I shouldn't have said that, but I, I have faith. I have faith. Um, Rhino Feeder, he's going to be going... Pretty soon, there's going to be a dark room, which is a room that you would typically need to uh, use Lumafly Lantern to see, but uh, we speedrunners don't really need the lanterns. We uh, we just use echolocation and consistent dashes to uh, find where we're going to be going. Rhino? Rhino. Rhino with a, l Rhino with a little bit of BM on the, uh, on the grub there, but... Thankfully, he got it. So, uh, looking forward to see Rhino's strat here. It's very impressive that he still has five health. Oh, may have cursed him there, but he still has five health going into this last area. I, he should be completely fine. And Clearus is going to be making his way to the Crystal Beaks as well. So here, he's going to be grabbing the upgraded version of the dive that you just saw him use, Descending Dark. Descending Dark, which gives iframes, which would you, if you didn't know, lets you not take damage. Silly gamers, just use iframes. So Rhino's going to be taking a long way around and not going to be uh, po poking off the first set, which is a pretty precise uh, jump. I haven't used it much as a current patch runner. But uh, here you're going to be seeing he's going to be storing his dash slash momentum and uh, running, ramming his head into these uh, spikes for early control, you see he's going to be able to move while he's still picking up the item. Um, so we're going to be seeing Kaliris be going to Crystal Peaks and Rhino Feeder is going to be doubling back and going and getting Dream Nail, which is a uh, great upgrade, if you didn't know, is absolutely necessary to finish the game. And what am I kidding? I want to know Dream Nail. Sorry, just grabbing a sip of water. Bad etiquette, my bad. Um, Rhino is going to be... Um, these platforms can be definitely some tricky... Definitely something tricky if um, you aren't really familiar with them. There's there's a pretty... It's pretty punishing if you miss a jump here or miss a dash here. Because you'll fall out of the transition and go back to where you fall... Back, your, back to where you went out. But as we saw, he leaves there which saves time in load time, but in load times, but loses time in real time. It's a common strategy used. It only works in the one, two, two, one version. It saves around a second. It's a pretty interesting technique uh, as well. So let's see if he makes the second underplot of the run. Yes, he does pretty cleanly. We, uh, Rhino is definitely pretty consistent movement and he uh, has for a while. He's put in various amounts of hours into pretty much every segment on this run. And even if it, even though it's coming out of his area of familiarity to um, that any percent in the areas that any percent shares, it's still a pretty comfortable area of the run for him. And we're going to be seeing Kaliris as well going up and doing just what Rhino did, going up and grabbing Crystal Heart and Descending Dark as well. And Rhino here is going to be going to Lorian doing the Watcher Knights here, which is going to be very satisfying for any for any any percent runners, any any percent runners here, because in this version, we just get to use Descending Dark to shred the enemies, which is pretty, pretty satisfying if you're used to any percent, where um, you usually have to be very careful about this boss fight. 
So there's some there's a decent amount of consistent strats that just work on this patch. Usually it's three dives or two dives, one nail hitting a fireball to kill these things, if I recall correctly. So Rhino, what something that he's doing there is the iframes in this version are long enough to work to the fact that you can just chain descending darts together and you'll never get hit by the enemy. That does not work on the current patch of the game, unfortunately. But it is good to see Rhino putting out very good damage here. This is a pretty good boss fight. See, ooh, get him getting away is a little unfortunate, but it's definitely not the end of the world. Clear us with four hearts here, or four masks here coming into this segment of the run. Should be pretty safe. I uh, just want to point out that it is very bad to die in this split um, that Clearus is in. You lose a lot of time, and it's just overall not great. But uh, Clearus running through this area pretty cleanly. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Commentator's cursed perfectly on time. I would expect nothing else out of myself. I said I'd be commentator's cursing Rhino as much as I can, but I seem to be commentator's cursing uh, Clearus just as much. So uh, let's start cursing Rhino a little bit more. But uh, ooh, him taking a hit there, returning to the beginning of the room, resetting the room, definitely a smart idea. Uh, let's see if he tr he does not trust himself with just two health, health going into this room. is going to be paying for his, I don't want to say, ooh, that's a Definitely very, very unfortunate death. That loses around three to four minutes of going all the way through Crystal Peaks. So uh, that's definitely one of the more unfortunate deaths that you don't want to see in this type of run. But Rhino Feeder um, doing pretty well for himself. He's going to be grabbing this chest, a little extra Geo for his travels, and he's going to be making his way down to Ancient Basin, which, or he's going to be grabbing Isma's tier along the way, which we're going to see some pretty interesting and moderately difficult skips out of him. I have no doubt that he is going to nail them all perfectly on his first try. There we go. There's some, there's some commentators curses for Rhino. Got to make it even. Yeah, so um, in this moment where both of them are just traveling, make sure to check out both the runners. Rhino has been streaming Rhino Hall Knight for a long time, and Kaliris is going to be... Ooh, the 666 Euro. Kaliris says he's going to be uh, running Hall Knight in the future. Looking forward to how both of them perform in the tournament upcoming. Little bit of stream lag on my end. I don't know how you guys are doing. But, uh... Rhino missing the skip. Ooh. Ooh, maybe that commentator's curse came in a little too hard. It's definitely a very difficult skip if you don't catch good momentum. But he does get it on his last health. We do like to see it. Um, these skips, he, there is a spot where you can recover, G, uh, recover soul here. I have no doubt that Rhino is going to go for it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely very familiar with this area. It's good. Infinite Geo here from the uh, Egu, the Egu container, as I call it. Yeah, very clutch from Rhino. I expect nothing else, nothing less from the Mr. Feeder. He's going to be doing this acid skip, which isn't too difficult. The second half, I was about to say, the second half is definitely more difficult. Getting uh, off that wall is the, probably the hardest part of the skip. But uh, he does two tries, no problem. Clearus trying to find his way back to uh, his sh where his shade was. If he just goes up here to the right, he should find it pretty easily. There we go. He 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 got his way. Uh, he gets a early control there using the uh, I won't say the word uh, as it is a curse word in some circles. Um, <laughs> but uh, he gets early control there, perfectly legal, and it is not a major glitch. It's just a minor glitch. Hence the no major glitches. And uh, Rhino's going to be making his way out of here, down, and hopefully be grabbing wings next, which should be uh, pretty pretty good. Um, this, ooh, Clear is still struggling with the dark room, which we 
is a little unfortunate. There are some more safety strats. But, uh, ooh, Rhino with a little, uh, he still has the Isma's Tear um, essence, which he was talking about today. We were actually talking about this on the Discord today. This is not a major glitch. It just happens when you quit out perfectly when um, perfectly when you get Isma's Tear and when the particle effects are going. More Hollow Knight uh, Papega for you all. There are some safety strats for this darkroom. I don't know if Clearus knows them. Yeah, it does not look like Clearus knows them and is therefore struggling with the uh, safety strats on this room. I take the safety strats. You gotta be pretty, you gotta usually be pretty bold and not take the safety strats there. He's gonna be trying to gather a little geo trapped in between a rock and a hard place. Ooh, he's gonna be getting his geo pretty cleanly. And Rhino is gonna be coming here. Um, there's a lot of RNG on these Mollocks coming up, which are the big spitty things that he's going to be going past and uh you're feel free to cast your votes on how many he's going to get hit by or not hit by because they are very there's some strategies that we use to try to avoid them but it's mostly inconsistent i don't want to curse him but very clean so far he has one left to go correct me if i'm wrong if he can get a no hit from the mollocks ooh, that's spicy rng the RNG gods are favoring him today, but Kaliris does get through the dark room pretty cleanly while I wasn't looking, which is, we like to see. He's going to be going here, getting descending dark, hopefully cleanly. And um, yeah, so Rhino is going to be doing this boss fight, the uh, Lost Kin, or is that the uh, harder version? Broken Vessel. Broken Vessel is this version. Some things to look for in this boss fight and the rest of the boss fights are... Um, that headbang attack that he's doing now is very good and is their favorite and is the runner's favorite and the best attack you can get because you can just spam descending darks on them, which is uh, very good. You see how quickly he got it. Rhino's getting really good RNG in the split, which is uh, you do like to see. Um, I, it might be a goal for him with the amount of good RNG he's getting. Uh, we'll, we'll see in the future. But, um, well, I mean, we'll see when he shows his splits everywhere. It looks pretty clean to me, but what, what do I really know? Uh, Clear's go making his way to Dream now, following in Rhino's footsteps. And Rhino getting the last, last movement ability and uh, in the double jump or monarch wings, which we don't really use in the run, but we have to get it anyways because it's a skill. And hence all skills. But, um... Yep, so uh, Rhino is going to be making his way to the outer reaches of the uh, of Hollow Nest to go get King's Brand, facing Hornet 2 along the way. Arguably, or I would say inarguably, the hardest boss fight in this run, Hornet 2. There's going to be a lot of things you want to look for there. Again, double hits are going to be very, very crucial. And... Uh, the Sending Darks are going to be good as well, but double hits, you definitely want to get as many as you can. Ooh, failed the underplat from Kaliris. Not, not the worst, loses around 10 seconds. Or less. It loses 10 seconds at any percent. And I just know that, because I would always fail them multiple times at any percent. So we're going to be seeing Rhino use the stag station to uh, make his way all the way out to the... Uh, to Kingdom's Edge. He's gonna be using his Crystal Dash to go through these rooms now as fast as he can. Not having to dash like a measly peasant through these rooms is gonna be pretty good from him. Uh, Clearus as well, he's gonna be making his way back. Hopefully doing the Isma skips, or he will be doing the Isma skips. I'm not gonna say anything about it because I do not wanna curse him again. But Rhino is going to be making his way back to all the way to Hornet 2, which uh, should be a very interesting boss fight to watch. It's very, it's definitely more interesting boss fight to watch. Very uh, high paced and interesting. I said interesting like five times there, but we're going to gloss over that. Uh, he elects to not take the safety bench. He has decent enough confidence in himself to uh, keep running, which is, uh, we do like to see. And uh, we'll, we'll see how the fight goes. 
Yeah, so just like Hornet 1, there's a certain number that you need to stagger her. Lino says he does not count it. Some runners do. A lot of runners don't. But you will see her stagger from time to time. So the runner's goals in this is to try to keep them in the... Keep Hornet 2, keep her in the corners as long as you can. And uh, hopefully... Hopefully predict her movements and not let her get anything out by surprise. I know this fight is pretty clean so far. It's not necessarily the fastest you've ever seen, but it is very clean, which we do expect. And just at the same time, we're going to be seeing Clearest do the Watcher Knights. Abuse them, which we do love to see. The Watcher Knights do deserve to be abused. It's a nice parry there to not take damage. They should be clean, be cleaning up these Watcher Knights pretty cleanly. Hopefully. He has no soul to recover health. I really have to just stop talking. But at the same time, Rhino is going to be uh, collecting his King's Brand. Okay, Clears is going to be getting out of here pretty quickly. And uh, a little bit scarily. Rhino is definitely ahead by quite a margin at this point. There's definitely some points that he could, I don't want to say throw, but yeah, throw throw the run away. But um, he's an experienced enough player that even if he does mess up once or twice, it shouldn't be the end of the world. So from here, Rhino's going to be going back and grabbing Cyclone Slash, the second nail art. Uh, this, this nail art allows you to spin in place, do some cool things with the last room of the game, which hopefully you might, we might see out of him. But um, overall, it allows you to fall faster, get a de get a lot of damage per second out. Not quite as much as fireballs or spells, I think. But it is a pretty good nail art that we're going to be getting here. And for like, unlike Dash Lash, this one's free, which we do like to see. Clearus pulling up Lorian, getting his health back, and he's going to be making his way down to the ancient basin and getting his mist here as well. We're going to see right now be going back to Dirt Mouth. Dirt Myth? Is it Dirt Myth or Dirt Mouth? I, I think it's Dirt Myth. It's Mouth. Uh, we'll, we'll keep that in uh, contention. But um, I, I, uh, I said this at the beginning of the run, but it's also going to be... Uh, I'll bring it back up. Rhino, I, di I am quoting Rhino here when he said he doesn't even care about average time a murdering Myla in cold blood. So we may see a Myla kill in the run, the first of the tournament. Um, it would be pretty special to see this. If he's not on PB pace, I I can't tell. If anyone in chat could that is more experienced with me with uh, speed runs could tell me of how good of a pace Rhino's on right now. He seems to be doing pretty good. Well, it's a couple small mistakes, nothing overly crazy. Clear is having a couple unfortunate dash deaths and is going to be doing the uh, nail pogo spike clearing. The German transla translation translated to mouth. Dirt moist. Uh, yeah, he's going to be... Uh, ooh. This is definitely one of the more difficult skips because as soon as you hit your nail hit, you need to time it perfect. You need to time your... Uh, Dash perfectly, but Clearus gets it. No problem. And he'll he will probably be getting the uh the uh extra soul from the eggu container as well. Ooh, but he forgets about the uh explodey fly thing. Back on the trend. And he's gonna be ooh, that is a tough death. Clearus not being lucky too lucky this, so far this run. Very unfortunate. But um, it's impressive. Rhino is very far from uh, PV pace. All right, that's that is good to know. I, I yeah, I would expect his PV to be much faster than anything you really can do in a tournament setting. But clear as that is, he's he's been having a slew of unfortunate deaths, but been recovering, bouncing back for them as well as he can. It's good to see he's still running and still trying to run as fast as he can.
even after the deaths. Uh, Rhino is going to be making his way down here, doing a uh, cool little drop. Ooh, getting hit, but it's no big deal. He's going to be going to one of the harder bosses in any percent again, but it's no big deal here, called Umu. Um, there is a one cycle that exists. We're going to see if he goes for it, which I don't doubt he will, and if he gets it, which is a little harder to predict. Um, I don't think he'll take the bench here. He doesn't. Uh, Clear is getting his shade and hopefully doing these skips with no problem. Right now, dodging explosions left and right as he uh, makes his way to Umu. Maybe he thinks about getting some extra soul, but he doesn't. It is Umu time, chat. So the uh, quick kill with Umu, or the one cycle with Umu on this patch involves pushing him as far as you can out of bounds. So much so to the fact that um, you, uh, so much for the fact that it insta-kills him, I believe. Or that doubles are free. One of the two. Clearest getting Isma's tier, doing that last uh, shade skip. Definitely one of the harder of the two. Ooh, unfortunate. Rhino does not get the one cycle, but this two cycle should be pretty free. As I say, trying to curse him. Right, Clear is making his way. He's going to be going to Monarch. He's going to be going to Ancient Basin, grabbing Monarch wings. And uh, Rhino will be cleaning up this fight pretty quickly. Yeah, just one fireball off. Unfortunate. So Rhino is going to be grabbing this, a cool tidbit that pretty much every speedrunner knows that you can't line up where you talk to Quirrell and talk to him at the same time. Not No casual player would ever know that, but pretty much all speedrunners would know that. <clears throat> so Clearest is going to be going, getting Monarch Wings as well. This is definitely a tough part of the run. As I said before, a lot of RNG that Rhino got very lucky with. And uh, hopefully Clearest gets the same luck. But uh, after this, Rhino is going to be making his way into Queen's Garden, doing another lever skip to get to Sly Clone. Uh, no, sorry. To get to... Um, he's going to be going and getting Great Slash first, then he's going to be going into Queen's Gardens. Getting my order messed up. But uh, he's going to be going to the far reaches of Green Path and getting his... Ooh, Clearest not getting, getting his Great Slash. Clearest not getting his lucky with the Molarchs and uh, taking a little bit of damage from them. But he's gonna be grabbing a little extra soul here and uh, should be finishing the rest of the runes, no problem. Rhino is gonna be making his way up here. He does have to bench here cause he will be quitting out and bench warping back. Or yeah, save and quit out. Not really technically a bench warp, but He's warping to the bench. It's close enough. And Kalirus is going to be doing this boss fight again, or doing this boss fight. Remember, um, it is important for them to try to hit doubles, and that uh, the the uh, whatever infection spraying attack is also pretty difficult. This climb always seems to amaze me. This almost as beautiful as an abyss climb. It's not as technically hard. But uh, it, is, it is pretty beautiful. A big uh, spitting attack from uh, from Broken Vessel. Ooh, another one, but he staggers right out of it, which is unfortunate. But uh, Clearest, with a very clean boss fight, is going to be doing the swag strat for the door. See if he gets it. And Rhino is going to be making his way to uh, Great Slash, the final, the final nail art given by everybody's favorite gay uh, artist. Shio. So, um, Kaliris is going to be quitting out here just as Rhino did, and he's going to be making his way back or all the way out to King's Brand and be doing the Hornet 2 fight <clears throat> just as Rhino did. Um, in this patch, can you dash through that on current patch? In this patch, yes, you can. You can't actually dash through that transition and get through them on current patch quick tidbit for you guys but uh, he takes a hit there which is definitely unfortunate not the end of the world though <clears throat> so 
So uh, he's going to be going all the way out there. There's nothing too hard here. He just needs to remember to cancel his C-dash. Or no, he's not even going to go on the side of that. But yeah, he cancels the C-dash before going through that transition. Galerius is going to be doing scurry, the scurry toll. Make the toll hurry up. Yeah. When I first heard about scurry toll, it was before I knew what scurry really, who scurry was. And I thought it was just a play on words on hurry. But it, Scurry is actually a person. So uh, who would have figured? So uh, Rhino is going to be saving and quitting back out to uh, the bench he took in archives. And he's going to be making way. He making his way now into Queen's Gardens. So uh, we should be see seeing good things out of both runners here. Some pretty interesting parts of the runs. Queen's Gardens is a definitely definitely one of the harder parts of the run, just like one at two. Um I don't know if he's autopiloting here. Oh no, no, you do. I'm I have current patch muscle memory. I apologize. You're so he's doing what you're supposed to do, I assure you. Um but uh here you go here because you can do the lever skip, so you go this way, which is faster and you go get howling wraiths this upcoming room has a very cool strat to get it just it just looks cool uh, that's all i have to say to get as many of the uh i think squits they're called as fast as you can so the goal in this room is to kill the squits as fast as you can obviously they come in waves of two or three so uh he not necessarily messes up the second cycle, but uh, he gets the la he get he finishes off pretty quickly, and that's just a cool use of the cyclone slash to go down faster. Kaliris with a pretty clean one two fight so far, no damage taken or he's sealed, and I haven't seen it. Up, oh, commentator cursed him again, but uh, it looks to be going pretty well so far. Don't want and getting clean, very clean doubles that. Oh, that was a lot of damages that just got done. We do really like to see that. Chaining together doubles very nicely. That was a definitely good and professional fight out of Kaliris. At least the second half that I was watching. So now we're going to see Rhino go through this area. And those spikes that those uh, little guys put off, the spiky dudes, they don't actually do anything on this patch, which is very nice. Uh, to say the least. So you can just walk through the spikes, they can shoot them at you, they don't do anything. So they're basically just free little soul, soul uh, collectors. And both of these guys will die from one shade soul, which is very good. And we're gonna be seeing Reno be using a death warp right here to get all the way to the bottom very quickly. More team cherry spaghetti for you. <clears throat> He's gonna be going through this area pretty cleanly. And this area, this room has a lot of uh, cool nuance and a lot of cool things about it. Like there's a very, very good way that players can go through this room pretty cleanly and interestingly, and it looks cool. So it's another cool thing about speedrunning. It there's sometimes it just looks really cool, and that room is definitely one of those examples. So he's gonna be coming here, prepping for the dark rooms. So these rooms upcoming, all three of them, there's going to be three in a row rooms that he cannot see. And another thing to consider about the dark rooms is that if you do take a hazard, which is hitting like spikes or something, you go all the way back to the beginning of the room, which is very unfortunate. Why not making his way through the first room? No problem. The second one is definitely the easiest of the three, it's just one landing on a platform and sea dashing off of it. And the third one, I would say, is the most complex. But uh, yeah. So Clearus also, he's going to go get Cyclone Slash. There should be no problems. There's nothing crazy difficult on that split for him. Ooh, Rhino taking a hit. But he seems to be getting through pretty quickly. <clears throat> and now it's pretty integral that they don't fall here. Oh, no. Pretty integral that the runners don't fall here. I did that on a PBA yesterday because I, you have to go through a very unfamiliar dark room to get back up, which is not fun. Now, unlike any percent, the runners can totally just completely skip everything here. 
So uh, it is pretty good. They get to completely skip sitting on the bench and they get to go and skip all of Beast Den just dealing with the last of these guys. No problem. Yeah, the dark. Yeah, I know the dark room is not that hard, but if you don't know it, it is. It is definitely a task if you do not. If you haven't known the dark room, yeah, that is a very. If you know Rando and if you've played Rando, that dark room is definitely a lot easier because that is a very common route to take. So at the same time here, Clear is grabbing Cyclone Flash and Rhino, um, grabbing the last streamer. So he only has a couple more skills to get before he is off the THK. Those being Shade Cloak, which is the upgraded Dash, and Abyss Shriek, the upgraded um, Howling Wraiths. So uh, Rhino, uh, he does not have any soul, so he's not going to be going directly left, as you might have seen in the left in the last race. It's just a little bit slower to go right. If you don't have any soul, though, it is faster. <clears throat> Now we're going to be seeing Clearest go to Umu coming up. This should be, uh, this fall, it definitely is R very RNG based and you can get hit, uh, affectionately called Fireborn, getting Fireborn, getting, getting hit a lot there. After he did it like three times in one of his races, very unfortunate. So, uh, Clearest is going to be making his way all the way out here. Pretty easy. This upcoming drop is not the easiest though. Let's see what strategy he uses. Yeah, he knows he knows the good strat. Yeah, it's pretty much identical fall to the one that Rhino had. And uh, Rhino is going to be making his way down to the abyss, probably one of the hardest areas in the game, or at least scariest. And uh, if you're into lore, there's a lot of weird and cool lore surrounding the abyss, which is uh, pretty cool. We'll see if he goes for swag door here. Oh, he does decide to go for Swagdor. A beautiful sight. Just see dashing through as soon as the door opens. And there is a strat. Yeah, a very popular strat right there to go go down as fast as possible. Rhino definitely knows it. Uh, Clears probably knows it as well. <clears throat> and Rhino's going to be making his way through this place. An important thing to note... Uh, for this part is the uh, main area enemies of this area, the siblings. They do two damage instead of one. So if you get hit three times by one of them or once by a random thing, and then twice by the siblings. So these little guys, yeah, as you see, you take two damage and it plays a very scary noise. But uh, Rhino is cleaning up them pretty quickly. And with this, uh, with this lighthouse being up, um, all the siblings go away. And I don't have the audio, but it looks like Clear's got the one cycle, which will bring him back a little bit of extra time. Yeah, and Clear is... To, uh, another interesting thing is wall click storage stays even if you're an acid, which is uh, pretty cool. Yeah, who would die to the siblings, lol? Uh some 15 14 year old resident streamer that has a color for a name i forget who it is is yeah who who would ever die to uh siblings especially late in a true ending run yeah clearest definitely has a lot of cool strats i'm looking forward to his upcoming races he got really unfortunate with a uh bad early game but the uh the rest of the run so far has been very very good the what we've seen in the last five, five, seven minutes from him has been very good. So uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of the tournament. I have high hopes for Clearest for the rest of the tournament. Definitely can win a bunch of matches when playing people of not quite Rhino's caliber. Rhino is a very definitely tough opponent for the first round of the tournament. A lot of knowledge and a lot of experience with running. We're going to be seeing him grabbing his last skill, the... Um, the uh, Abyss Shriek, which is the most damaging of all spells, so they try to use it as much as possible when they have it. And uh, he's going to be making his way off the THK after this. Yeah, so Rhino's PB is a 51 minute and 52 seconds, so we might, we probably won't be 
seeing a PB from him, but we will definitely be seeing a good time. <laughs> I was here wondering what the fuck I never died. Oh, sorry, my language, sorry. Um, WTF, I never died to siblings, yeah. There's some some unnamed streamer that has died to siblings as of late that is getting bullied for it. If you don't know, it is a true running speedrunner named after a color. That's probably all the hints I have to get. So now we're going to be seeing Rhino go and do Abyss Climb, which is well, probably one of the most beautiful parts of the run, if done correctly. He uh, talked about it in his last run. It's one of the it's very, very um, technical in terms of m maneuvering and movement, but uh, is very, very optimizable. So Clearest is going to be making his way to Great Slash. He's going to be doing these C dashes, get his, getting there as far as he, as fast as he can, and Rhino's going to be making his way to THK to finish the game. With maybe a pit stop on the way, we we do we do not know about the pit stop that is coming up. It could happen. It w he said it might happen. Yeah, that was a very very clean abyss climb from Rhino. But uh, we will see if uh, the the blessed the blessed will be coming. So uh, Clear is making his way to Great Slash. Nothing crazy. And uh, Rhino potentially going straight to THK and potentially taking a quick detour. Don't want to get anyone's hypes up. Oh, we do see the detour. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, Rhino, oh. Uh. Boom, boom, scammed, scammed. Oh, but we are going to be seeing, we're going to be seeing Dab Knight from him right here which is a beautiful sight for Sorize and almost makes it up the fact that he didn't grab Mila. So if you don't know, just like before with uh, in the Crystallized Mound, he saved the state of being able to dash slash. You can save the state of cycloning. And uh, you, you spin around very fast while you're doing the transition and you just keep doing it and it's beautiful. So uh, we're all going to have to definitely bully Rand, uh, Rhino when in his, his post-game interview about the, uh, the scam that just took place. And we're going to be seeing an interesting... Um, well, Clearest is going to be going for um, race at this point. I, my crew patch muscle memory just keeps clicking in this part of the run. But uh, Rhino, the main focus of this fight, he's going to be trying to get off as many Abyss Shrieks as he can and stay as close to THK as he can, get as much damage off in a row. Any chance he gets, he's going to Abyss Shriek because that just does insane damage. I think 120 damage per if he gets all four hits off or three. Is it three or four? If he gets all the hits off, it's 120 damage, which is incredible. Correct me if I'm wrong. And we're going to be seeing uh, Clearest doing this strat as well, pretty cleanly. He's going to be getting Howling Wraiths with no deal difficulty. Now, this is a this is an attack you really want to see, especially at this part of the race. And he does scream, skip, skip, which is very important. Big GGs to Rhino Feeder. A very good run. Oh, no, he's going to be scamming. Oh, he's going to be. He's just going to be chilling. Forfeiting his good average time for uh, the content, if you will. Yeah, screen skip skip. It's pretty much um, just RNG, but you do need a little skill to perform it as well. But a uh, very good run from Rhino. Just over a 42, a 54, a 42. Where did I get the four into the two? I saw, uh, maybe 5402. Very good run from Rhino. And uh, Clearest is going to be finishing up rather soon. I'm just going to let him know that Rhino finished. Um, um, uh, actually, let me mark Rhino as the winner. So 
sorry. Just letting Kaliris know that we finished. Big GG's to both runners. Kaliris is probably going to finish out his run. Show everyone else. Show everyone how his late game is doing. Because uh, so far his late game has been very impressive. Yeah, just a couple mishaps in the beginning in Soul Sanctum. It's so easy just to get chain death. And uh, it's good that he didn't never actually ended up losing all his Geo, which would have been even worse of a time loss. It's good that he avoided that. Now we're going to be seeing Kaliris do the dark runes. Yeah, funny enough, Kaliris started doing weather when I, started, when I stopped cursing him, which is good. He has no problem with this dark room. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing the next two pretty cleanly. Yeah, this dark room is definitely a little more finicky because uh, if you go too far in certain aspects, you can spawn the uh, the larger spiders the, or the larger weavers. Like one spawns here, but uh, he comes through with full health, which is very, very impressive. Even with a heal full health coming out of that is very impressive. And it's, it's very comforting as a runner to know that you have a lot of health. Feel free to, to guess Rhino's percentages won't be a difficulty for uh, anyone that knows the category, but um, yeah, we're going to see Rhino skip this area just as Rhino did, or we're going to see Kaliris skip the area. Did I say Rhino? No, I didn't say Rhino. You heard me wrong. Yeah, so even if you get hit, hit there with, two, uh, with full health, it's no big deal. Very, very comfy to be doing that with full health, which is it's good to see. We're going to be seeing Kaliris take on Heron out. I don't believe a dash slash actually does anything there, but correct me if I'm wrong. I heard, I think I heard that somewhere. Actually, I'm very not confident on that. <clears throat> Kaliris just breaking the hour mark. And he's going to be making his way down. Down we go now to Shane Cloak and Abyss Streak. One of the more most interesting parts of the run for the late game. Oh, we might see some post-game content out of Rhino. Uh, I, I would be very sad to see if he didn't give us some con post-game content. Ah, oh, the traitor. He's going to talk to Elderbug. The casuals have made it to him. Oh, no, he's not. I faked you all. I tricked you. You thought he was going to go talk to Elderbug, but the casuals will never get to Rhino Feeder. His will is too strong, and his intent on killing Myla, too great. At the same time, Clearus is going to be going all the way down to the Abyss. And um, we should see a pretty good Abyss out of him. Nothing too crazy. What is, what is Rhino doing with that, with that Vengefly? Bullying it. Clearus giving it, Rhino giving us some wiggles before entering Myla room. I have to say, there's no bigger hater of Mila than uh, Rhino Feeder. He he definitely is one of the people. So it should be good to see him eventually, once, once he's done messing with Mila, kill her. But uh, today will not be the day where we get the first Mila kill in run, sadly. Oh, we're going to be seeing Swagdor out of Kaliris too. It is always beautiful to see. And I assume he knows the same drop as Rhino. Yep. Tries to uh, stop the inventory drop before he takes the hard fall, but it's that is certainly no big deal. Yep. Just remember the siblings, two damage, very scary. And like to bully 15-year-old children with colors for names. Yeah, we are not the bulliers. It is the children. It is the siblings. That, did I say children? Yeah, it is the siblings that do the bullying. Yeah, but Clear is definitely taking a little bit of a safer route. Nothing, nothing too crazy, but it still is def a decently fast route as well. Grabbing, grabbing some soul along the way, and uh, he's going to be doing a pretty consistent drop there to not hit the void tendrils. Yes, there we go, Rhino. Perfectly executed Mila kill. That is one of the hardest tricks in the game. We do like to see it. 
Let's fucking go right now. And we're going to be see clear, seeing Kaliris. Uh, I don't think I pointed out when Rhino did it, but they do quit out here because it is faster to quit out and then load back in than it is to wait for that cutscene to finish, which is pretty interesting. But uh, I, I, I'm a very happy, I am a very happy man to see Myla dead. Another, <laughs> he's Rhino is gonna be grabbing up his, uh, his troop, and uh, he's just gonna be wandering around while Clearest finishes up his run. So uh, we're gonna be seeing Clearest go all the way back across Abyss and then do the uh, famous Abyss climb. There's some, if, if you're not satisfied by the Abyss Climbs here, you can go check out the uh, Abyss Climb ILs, which do a little bit of different strats in order to do it faster, trade off some speed for some RNG. And uh, on speed uh, on speedrun.com, obviously, the IL leaderboard, pretty interesting. And if you have a minute and want to go see it, you definitely can. Oh, is he going to be trying to get Menderbug? Oh, he is. <laughs> so if you don't know here, Rhino is going to be there is a uh, enemy that can spawn here that um, it has a 1 in 50 chance of spawning and uh, Rhino's trying to get Menderbug. So that uh, its name is Menderbug and it um, you do kill him if you dive there. So Rhino is going to be collecting up soul for his dives and he's just going to be going up and down in desperate search of a of a mender bug to kill. We're gonna be seeing Clearest. What I wonder what strats he's gonna use. Pretty similar strats to the ones Rhino used. Very good strats. I'm very impressed by Clear. I uh, yeah, I have been very impressed by Clearest's ability to rebound. That is not a very easy uh, triple that triple pogo right there, but Clearest pulls it off. But Clearest has rebounded remarkably well from his poor beginning game just unfortunate rng and then chain dying it's just un it's just an overall unfortunate yeah someone let me know if mender if menderbug gets killed because i'm gonna be watching Kaliris for the most part finish out his run but yeah the very good abyss climb out of out of uh Kaliris. and hopefully yeah i expect big things out of both of these runners for this tournament Players definitely can make a comeback in the upcoming four games. If you don't know, the uh, tournament works on a Sw uh, Swiss bracket. So if you win, you play. You pl so basically, you play other players with your exact same record. So Rhino is going to be playing people that, after this, he will be playing someone that's also gone one and zero, and then Clear says will be playing someone who's gone zero and one, et cetera, et cetera, for every game. So after this first round, the matches should be pretty much equal for the entire game. Rhino's going to be hanging out with the Grubs. And uh, Clear should be uh, finishing out the game pretty nicely. Other than a couple mishaps from uh, Clear, we've seen a very clean run from him. There's been a couple spots where it's just been unfortunate to... Uh, just unfortunate deaths, but other than that, his movement has been very, very clean. He's still he stuck with Rhino all the way up until his first death, for the most part, just a minute off. But um, it is good to say both runners doing pretty well. Rhino, I have no doubt, is disappointed in his run, at least for a little bit. I know he is a very competitive person and likes to try to push himself sometimes farther than he can go, but. Uh, <clears throat> he should be happy with this one. A 5402 is a very good time. It's within, it's within two minutes, or just without two minutes of his PB. Now we're going to be seeing a, a, a THK fight out of Clearest here. Uh, I'll, I said this before, but I'll say it again. Make sure to follow both the runners. Rhino already makes Hollow Knight uh, content, and Clearest said he is going to be doing so very soon. So exclamation mark R to go see the runners. Follow their Twitches. And uh, go join the Hollow Knight Discord, too, if you want to know the schedule, want to hang out in the speed gaming or the speed running channel, and uh, maybe join the speedrunning community on your own if you're not in it. Oh, I will plug all the things. I'm an expert plugger. So um, this self-stab attack, if you don't know, it, your attacks only do one damage while he's going. So 
it it's pretty safe and doesn't really lose any time at all or it loses a like, fractions of time if the runners just heal during it which is uh usually the smart outcome so um hollow knight gives the bouncing attack which can be pretty unfortunate if you don't have soul or know the strats and that's the final scream he does not get scream skip but uh he kills him pretty quickly after Clear is finishing up here. Big GGs. Big GGs to both runners. And uh, I look forward, yeah, I've said this a million times, but I look forward to seeing them both in upcoming races. So stick around after the run. We're going to get them both in here for a little bit of an interview. And uh, we'll see what we have in store from them. What they thought of their run, what their hopes for the tournament are, and uh, anything else that they have to say. Yeah, we, we might bully uh, Rhino a little bit. But, uh, for uh, going back on his word, if you will. But uh, he, he played very well. Now, don't bully him. I made a clip. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, so Kalir should be invited here pretty soon. And then once they're both in here, they'll be getting in here for an interview. Yeah, no bully on Rhino. He just, he just made the wrong decision. He just he just didn't want to BM. It's understandable. It's understandable. So, uh, Clears finishing up at a 107. I don't doubt that he's disappointed by that. But there's still four games left. That's the beauty of the Swiss bracket. <clears throat> yeah, there's still four games left to hopefully bring himself back up and... Uh, perform better yeah that's that's probably what he's thinking himself right now but we'll get them both into interviews and uh hopefully he'll be joining the discord as well uh, i'll be checking Uh, I'm just checking with them if they're going to be coming in for interviews. Uh, Kaliris will be coming in soon, hopefully. Uh, but... I spelt want incredibly wrong when I just asked uh, if he clears wants to come in for an interview. Maybe he's not looking like it. Um, yeah, there's no sh definitely no shade if uh, he does not want to do an interview. I'll ping him. Yeah, he might not have gotten the uh, notification from Speed Gaming to jump in for the interview yet. Yeah, Monsta and Dudex Cubed are playing in the other channel right now after the interview. We'll definitely go check them out. I'll, I'll be watching. I don't know what you guys are going to be doing. And another race starts in like 20 minutes, yeah. We'll see. But uh, for now, I'll get Rhino in here. If he wants to come in. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, hello, Rhino. Big GGs. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Um, so what do you think of your run? Um, not happy. It, it wasn't a very good run for me, but it's a tournament setting. My nerves were absolutely crazy, so I'm I'm happy to finish. Um, I don't I don't think I had any like crazy major mistakes, but um, yeah. you know, a, a lot to clean up for the future, and I'm I'm happy with the win. Yeah, yeah, definitely be happy with the win, and uh, it should be good for the next time. You did very well. I was. Oh, thank you. Yeah, big GGs. Uh, what are you hoping for the rest of the tournament? Uh, I feel like you definitely have a lot of potential for the rest of the tournament. 
Yeah, you know, um, it, it'd be nice to make it into the final top eight bracket. That's definitely an ambition of mine. Um, you know, my, my, I definitely don't think I put my best run forward today. I mean, I was, I was about thirty seconds behind at Mantis Claw, so uh, I was having a rough time. But yeah, um, I, I'm, I know I'm definitely going to have to step it up if I want to achieve that goal. So uh, I think that I think this race, th this being my first ever tournament race. And, uh, run of this nature really just got me into the mindset of um, you know some things I might do a little differently with my movement and other things that I might play a bit safer than if I were going for PB attempts. So I think with this one out of the way, future runs will be a bit more a bit more relaxed for me. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think chat wants to know more than anything. <laughs> um, any <laughs> comments on the Myla tease? Uh, you did you did say that you don't care about average time. But. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I mean, I, I did that after THK for what it's. Oh, you mean when I, when I was going to leave? I debated it. Um, yeah. I, I was thinking about it, and then I saw that I could still 53 with a good THK fight. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go kill THK. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all for the content. It's all for the content. Yes, it's all for the content. <clears throat> um, I don't know if Clear is going to jump in here. I haven't heard anything from him. So, if not, if there's no. Other remarks that you wanna? You just I think wanna, Calaris, Oh yeah, Clearus. Yeah, yeah. He says, yeah. He doesn't think he. So we're not gonna be having Clearus in here for an interview today. But mm -hmm. if there's any anything else you want to talk about, anything else you want to plug, say um, at all. Feel yeah, free. sure. Um, so first off, I want to thank um, any 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 of my community members that tuned in to cheer me on. Um, a couple. I know a couple of my family members and IRL friends tune in as well. So thank you. It means it means the world to me that you came in to watch. And to any, anyone else, um, I'd appreciate if you go follow my Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Rhino Feeder, where I do a lot of Hollow Knight runs every day. Um, obviously, mostly focus on all skills right now for the tournament, but I also do a lot of any percent and other various runs. So um, come hang out with me. We have a fun time. Yeah, definitely. So uh, if nothing else, we're going to be wrapping up now. Uh, there's some other races going on right now. I, I'll be tuning into those. I hope you will too, right now. And uh, I hope everything else, everyone else will be doing too. So. One thing I got to ask you real quick, Saber. I, I had the stream open, but I didn't have audio on. And I saw a lot of comments about your commentary being super, super hype. Can you, can you give me a little bit of what that was? And um, I was trying to curse you as much as possible. <laughs> and it might have worked for the, uh, the um, what's it called? The oh, spike the spike tunnel skip? Yeah, the oh, spike God. tunnel skip. I, I feel that bad was a, a nightmare. little bit. I felt definitely a little bad about cursing you a little bit there. But oh, it happened. Bad. Oh, I have a question. Did you gold um, Did you gold your uh, the Monarch Wing split? No, looked, I, did looked, I did not. I did not. I think I'm, I I did save time versus my PV, but it wasn't a gold. All right, all right. Yeah. Big GGs to everyone, and uh, thank you all for uh, hanging out. Go check out the other runs. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching.